What's up ladies and gents, this is KC Kid coming at you with another Destiny video. Bungie released information as far as weapon tuning in December, and there is a lot of changes. A lot of things are going to be different in Destiny. So I want to go over what some of these changes are to our favorite weapon types and some of our new exotic weapons. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Now we're going to go down by the weapons by their type first, and starting off we have auto rifles. So basically Bungie's not happy in PvP that auto rifles are getting steamrolled by pulse rifles. So what they're going to do is increase the base damage. Low rate of fire auto rifles like the Suros are getting 3% damage increase. Medium range like the Zalo Supercell are getting a whopping 7% base increase. And high rate of fire like the Necrochasm. <laughs> 170 necrochasm <laughs> those are getting a four percent damage increase now with this i have a feeling that something like the zalo is going to be extremely useful in the coming patch because it's not terrible i mean i've seen a lot of people get wrecked by the zalo as it is right now typically it's because you're getting a few shots off before the person knows where you're shooting from but still I think Zalo is going to be really effective, and I'm going to keep my eye on that, because that might be my weapon of choice coming into the future. Pulse Rifles though, Pulse Rifles are getting nerfed. They are definitely getting nerfed. Pulse Rifles are by far the best gun in the game right now, and so what they're going to do is they're going to reduce all the damage on Pulse Rifles, which is going to make things really tricky. So low rate of fire ones like the Messenger are getting a big time 9% damage decrease. And that's going to hurt a lot. Not to mention the Hawksaw is going to get an 8% decrease as well as the Bad Juju. And the high rate of fire ones like your Grasps of Malak, those are only getting a 2% decrease. So I have a feeling this is going to hurt a lot. It's definitely going to take away that 2 burst potential, that 2 burst killing potential from weapon rate of fires like the Messenger. And that's going to be tricky. I mean, they're doing this all in PvP and that's going to nerf people's usage of pulse rifles in pvp they are boosting damage in pve by just a slight slight amount so you can still use your smite of moraines in pvp if you got it from the king's fall raid hand cannons are not in a good spot they're nowhere near the dominant type in pvp like they used to be not even in pve so Bungie, they, I just don't think what they're doing right here with the hand cannons is going to help them get back to where they were. They're basically increasing the accuracy whenever you're aiming down the sights of the hand cannons, and that is it. As far as shotguns, Bungie has a mess with shotguns right now. Honestly, I know shotguns are really prevalent in PvP, I just don't find them to be that big of a problem. If you're in close and somebody's shooting you with a shotgun, you're probably going to die. And I feel like the range is a lot better than it was previously in year one, but they're going back and they're fixing all kinds of stuff with shotguns now. Basically, they're saying that shotguns are going to be useful from roughly around your melee range, and that's going to hurt things a lot. Then they're increasing the reload speed, so, well, decreasing the reload speed so you have slower reload, slower time to aim down the sights, slower base movement speed, they're adding a delay after you're sprinting, all kinds of things with shotguns. Basically, what I think is going to happen is your one-shot high-impact shotguns are going to fall by the wayside. I think you're going to start seeing a lot more fast rate of fire shotguns or auto-firing shotguns. I think those are going to be a lot more useful whenever you come into PvP. Because honestly, if you have to be within melee range anyway, you might as well be able to fire off as many shots as possible. So keep that in mind. I have a feeling you're going to see a big-time change from one-shot shotguns to multiple rate of fire shotguns. That's my guess. As far as fusion rifles, the way Bungie talks about fusion rifles, it sounds awesome. If you have high stability, your fusion rifle bursts should stick together and you should hit more of your shots there. If you have high range, they should fire off faster to the target and if you have high charge speed, you should be able to react quicker and shoot them off faster. That's all great, except for the fact that fusion rifles just they shoot projectiles, so they're really not all that reliable again in PvP atmosphere. So Bungie's going to change some things, like increasing the charge speed on fast charging fusion rifles, which might make the Telesto really awesome in PvP. I'm going to keep my eye on that. That might be a lot of fun. But what they're going to do to compensate for some of this stuff is they're going to reduce the amount of fusion rifle ammo you can carry, and that's terrible. I hate whenever they do that. 
Fusion rifles, especially something like the Telesto, are just so much fun. You can fire off so many shots with those in PvE, and I don't think the damage increase is actually going to make up for that. As far as sniper rifles, well, say goodbye to your Irene. Much like Final Round, now Luck in the Chamber is going to require precision shots to get the damage bonus, so in PvP, that is completely useless, and honestly, nobody's going to be rocking out the Irene anymore. Everybody, everybody, everybody you see in PvP is going to be using 1000 yard stairs because of the massive aim assist, and... I'll still be keeping my Irene for PvE because it's much easier to get headshots and the headshots are actually going to matter because you're going to want that extra precision damage a lot of the times anyway. But in PvP, good night Irene, it's done, it's over. Sidearms, sidearms are just kind of that afterthought in general. They say they're going to increase the ready and stow speed for all sidearms. I don't know if any of this is going to make a difference. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with shotguns because that's pretty much the one thing that determines if you want to use sidearms at all. And honestly, nobody wants to use sidearms. Heavy ammo on the Aside way. from all of these weapon changes, you notice we didn't hear anything about heavy machine guns or rocket launchers, which makes me think those are in a pretty good place. And I feel like they are. Rocket launchers without the Yalahorn are, you know, so-so. Good heavy in Charles Cyrus, available. good in some PvP atmospheres, but in PvE, not a big fan. Machine guns all the way in PvE right now. And we didn't hear anything about swords either. <laughs> so swords are in a really good place. As far as exotics, they're tweaking the first curse. The first curse is terrible, absolutely terrible. It's supposed to be the anti-last word where you get rewarded from long range shots while you're aiming down the sights, but it's just really bad. So they're doing a few changes to that. First off, they're changing the imprecation, which is the white gun you need to use in PvP in order to get the last part of the first curse's bounty. And they're going to increase the range and magazine size, which is good because the imprecation is terrible and really difficult to kill enemies. I imagine a lot of people that got the first curse probably ended up using their buddies in Rumble to get those headshot kills. The first curse's special perk is going to refill the magazine when it's activated, so that's pretty nice. Increasing the stability, target acquisition, and damage falloff is going to start off further away while active. Also, a plus 25 range is going to help. So, I think those things are all good for the gun. I don't know if anybody's going to use it, mainly because everybody is using the Hawkmoon. And Bungie is acknowledging that the Hawkmoon is the only way to go for hand cannons. So, what are they going to do with that? They're going to reduce the range. <laughs> They're going to reduce the range to the Hawkmoon. And lucky bullets that you get from luck in the chamber and holding aces now are going to basically have a 10% decrease in the damage that they dealt. Though they are still saying that you can two-shot if you get both of those to proc. So that's probably a good thing. I don't know though. Hand cannons aren't in a good place as it is. And I'm really not feeling like I'm seeing a ton of Hawkmoons running around killing everybody. So nerfing them more... I just don't know that that's the right answer. I don't think it's going to make anybody else use a different hand cannon. People are just going to avoid hand cannons in general. Just my opinion. The Chaperone is getting a reduced base damage, and it's going to have its precision damage massively increased. And I really don't understand this at all in PvP, because the Slug wasn't one-shotting to the body anyway. And of course you were going to one-shot whenever you hit a precision shot. So I'm just not sure how this is actually going to help PvP at all. Maybe it'll be useful in PvE, but that's to be seen, I guess. I, I don't know. That, that one doesn't make any sense to me as far as PvP balancing goes. The Fabian strategy is getting a lot of changes, and I'm going to leave these up on the screen for just a little bit so you can read through those. Basically, people thought the gun was broken and not working, but Bungie says that it was working More as intended. Like it's just the we bonuses just we were getting from its special perks weren't really that noticeable. So Bungie's going and they're tweaking the whole gun, they're making it the fastest rate of fire type of auto rifle, and giving it some extra boosts intrinsically to make up for some of its changes. The Black Spindle, they are removing the scope upgrade because you were never really getting a different scope visually on the gun, so that scope upgrade is going to turn into barrel upgrades. And finally, the Sleeper Simulant is getting some changes, but mainly the big one is its max ammo capacity is going to be 9 instead of 7, which the gun sorely needed. It's also going to benefit from heavy ammo perks on armor as opposed to fusion rifle ones. I don't think that's enough for the gun just yet. I think it could use something more awesome in the future. 
but that's it. Those are all the weapon changes we're going to see in December. It's a lot. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smack that like button and subscribe to the channel to keep updated on daily Destiny content. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, the Taken King, and I'll see you around in Destiny. Change. Spare change.